Kiss my ass remains the same. In the midnight hour, she cried more, more, more. With a rebel yell, she cried more, more, more. Wow. Oh, and now those radical socialists run of Baltimore, they want the American taxpayers to pay the, for the riot damages. Like $20 million or something. But that's what these liberals do. They screw crap up. And then they expect somebody else to pay for it. Can we get you all a George Foreman reel too? How would that be? Check this out. In one year, the Defense Department put over $3 million on their government credit cards from casinos and strip clubs. Like yeah, man. So it should come as no surprise that this is the same Defense Department that court martialed a Marine for having a Bible scripture on their desk. It bothers me to think that my own country is a strange land. I never thought there would be a day when my nation would persecute the Bible-believing Christian for standing for what the Word of God says and reward those who come against it as if they are heroes, as if they are great Americans for standing up against God. But that's where we are. Once proud organization, the Boy Scouts of America. Just go ahead and write them off. They're, they're now in the dustbin of good things destroyed by liberalism. Any day now, they're going to be getting merit badges for masturbation and uh, ballroom dancing. Two things that come in handy when a bear is chasing your ass through the woods. <laughs> but now, look, no, no joke. The head of the Boy Scouts now wants to allow openly gay men to serve as scout leaders. Gay men in tents with young boys. What could go wrong? On the basis of sexual orientation. This is just breathtakingly inappropriate. I mean, just as it's inappropriate for a man to be a Girl Scout leader. 
for exactly the same reason. Speaking of high fashion, you see, Hillary Clinton's got a clothing line now. Good looking stuff too, man. You can get a Hillary Clinton pantsuit t-shirt. You know, all the cool kids are wearing them. They're even better than a leisure suit. Now, if you see some fruitcake out there wearing a Hillary Clinton t-shirt, please take their picture, send it to me, and we will apply the appropriate amount of ridicule. I'm gonna take two and a half tubes. Keep Obama in president, you know? He gave us a phone. Obama voters are the reason we have to put directions on shampoo. It looks delicious. And welcome to Intellectual Frog Legs. See the Obama administration is claiming dominion over all the water. Claiming dominion. That sounds just like very medieval or something, doesn't it? <laughs> it ain't. Uh, and for you people that are government educated, that means they hijack control of America's streams, creeks, rivers, tributaries, wetlands, basically any body of water, including some puddles. <laughs> And was, but they're doing this all in the name of their new clean water initiative. Because that's going to help the climate change. Which, of course, means more rules and regulations and policies and guidelines and fees and fines and more of those government forms that we all love. And then it's, nothing fires up a society like forms. Now, according to my inside unnamed sources, they're also looking for dominion over wet parts. Because <laughs> you better be laying off the soup beans and turnip greens. You kidding? These people are crazy. You know, with all the floods in Texas and Oklahoma, what a better time for Obama to go to Miami and, uh, give a climate change speech in between rounds of golf. Globally, we could see a rise in climate change refugees. But that's what he does. A few days before that, he's at the Coast Guard uh, graduation warning the graduates of the greatest danger that they'll face. It's not ISIS, and it's not jihad, it's weather. <laughs> and I guarantee the Coast Guard will have to respond. You know, everything bad that happens, and just blame it on climate change. Don't matter. Your pants are too tight, that's climate change. <laughs> you got gas, climate change. And stuff is, this is like beyond the cuckoo's nest, man. Your wife's fat, that's climate change. That's not those donuts. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, we even busted the scientists. We got their emails where they admit to manipulating the data. I'm proving them wrong it means nothing. They keep going. This is a ridiculously well-funded global push for all this climate change nonsense. It's about control, make no mistake. And our president, uh, uh, Captain Destructo, is their top salesman. And these guys just get up there and, and insist the science is settled, but there are over 30,000 experts and scientists that disagree. That's why we have to continue to repeat the truth, because they're going to continue to repeat the lies, and they are absolute lies. They're gonna sit there and repeat that nonsense 
over and over again till people believe it. And a lot of people do believe it. But that's what they can, you control the microphones. Back on the media thing, you control the microphones, you control the message. This is Major Tom to ground control. Speaking of controlling the message, despite the fact that our country is clearly moving to the right over the last uh, few election cycles, uh, liberalism is the only opinion tolerated at the majority of our universities across this nation, especially when it comes time for commencement speeches. Joe Biden gave a speech over at Yale. <laughs> I understand he was wearing a shock collar. <laughs> Then you had then Hollywood's in the action, Robert De Niro up there dropping F-bombs at his. Tisch graduates, you made it. And you and Then you had Robert Redford, Sundance. I'm sorry, Sundance needs to be riding off into the sunset. Looked like he had an applesauce dripping off his chin. But the one I'm sick of is I'm sick of hearing Michelle Obama. She continuously goes on and on and on about how horrible America is. You know, for Just, once I'd like to hear her talk about how awesome America is. For example, as a black person who represents 13% of the population, her husband was elected president not once, but twice in a country that is 70% white. But see, of course, that doesn't work with her anti-American Marxist racist theme, you know. She says, just like Marie Antoinette. Well, look who's here to push your husband's socialist health care agenda. <laughs> and now they've gone to the point where they're just comically intolerant. The grand poobahs of diversity. <laughs> uh, even some Democrats are speaking out. Even that uh, Kristen Powers from Fox. But she says, the root of every free speech infringement on campuses across our country is that someone almost always a liberal, has been offended or has sniffed out a potential offense in the making, then the silencing campaign begins. The offender must be punished, not just for justice's sake, but also to send a message to anybody that strays off the approved liberal script, that, that they too might find themselves investigated, harassed, ostracized, or even expelled from school. And if these wildly intolerant liberals can preemptively shut somebody up, like getting a speaker canceled or having an event canceled or uh, whatever, that's even better. These advocates of inclusiveness and diversity, they've created this Orwellian climate of intimidation and free speech is not welcome. And you better not oppose what they're saying. Now, of course we believe in free speech as long as you say what we tell you to. <laughs> Most everybody's aware of Common Core now, you know, the, uh, the, the federal standards for education. No wonder our kids are stupid. Here's one of the many examples. Check out this elementary school math test question. It says, tell how to make 10 when adding A plus 5. And the child accurately says, you cannot get 10 when you add 8 and 5. But the teacher writes in there and says, yes you can. Take 2 from 5 and add it to 8. Because A plus 2 equals 10, and then add the 3. This is, so this is basically the unicorn formula. And then it goes, anything I want plus anything I choose equals whatever I say. And you can't judge me. Everybody's right. We're so lucky to have such dedicated union members teaching our children. Your love gives 
me such a thrill. But your love won't pay my bills. I want money. Today, once again, the United States is the most respected country on earth. Coming to take me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, he ha ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. You know, I've said many times, if you don't have a pastor or a priest that fires you up, and then someone that you genuinely enjoy listening to, then you need to find one. It is that important. You need to find one. I want to share this story, this awesome story, awesome story. As many of you know, my son J.D. was wrongly taken from me eight years ago by our wonderful court system, a.k.a. our halls of justice. Anyway, it turns out during this time, my son was going through some really, really bad stuff. Dark, dark times. The Reader's Digest version, he was hanging out with criminals in southern Arizona, doing drugs, and he got arrested. And it's actually a much more compelling story than I can articulate. So, here we go. Rewind back to the first part of, of May. J.D. flew in for a two-week visit. When he arrived, it was on a Saturday. I didn't know it, but he was high. And so I let him sleep for two and a half days. He didn't eat or nothing, he just slept through it. But, on t but when Tuesday rolled around, I thought we were going to church. And apparently it had more of an impact on him than I thought because he asked to go back. So we did. And, and I mean, I was sitting there, I was watching JD's heart change. Right, right, I could see it. And uh, anyway, he was scheduled to be here two weeks. And so we ended up going to church a few more times. And at that point, JD and I both knew that he could not go back to Arizona. No way that he could go back into that environment of drugs and thugs. Anyway, the next Sunday, our awesome Pastor Steve knocked it out of the park as usual. And then after the service, I told JD, I said, Let's go up and shake Pastor Steve's hand. Now, a quick note about Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve's in high demand. He's like a rock star with, without the bad stuff. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he, he, he also occasionally appears on Fox News and in documentaries. He regularly travels to the Middle East to help the Christians and the Israelis. It's not going to get easier, period. And so the church is gonna to have to navigate some very, very difficult waters here in America because we're not used to having our religious freedoms infringed upon. And how we respond to that in this critical time, it's radically important. Anyway, turns out that Pastor Steve had his own trouble with drugs a few decades earlier. And when I introduced Pastor Steve to JD and mentioned drugs, something clicked inside Pastor Steve. And he basically just pushed me aside and focused all of his attention on JD. And then he grabbed JD and took him over to a, a group of kids and told them, Guys, meet JD. He just moved here, and I want you guys to take him under your wing. And I was just sitting there watching this. All of a sudden, it was like JD was one of the Beatles. They were just clamoring around him. I mean, it was a, a good-sized group of kids. And it didn't hurt that a few of them were pretty southern girls, either. Uh, but, but they were all reaching out to him. Basically, JD was being ambushed by God's grace. And I just stood there in awe with one of my buddies who was just watching. Uh, JD's face was glowing, glowing. He was grinning so big that I was certain he was gonna come out with a mouthful of earwax. <laughs> hey, I've never seen JD so happy. I don't think I've ever seen anybody so happy. I even got a lump in my throat. But anyway, long story short, JD's been embraced by a group of the finest human beings on this planet. He's been invited to go places like kayaking and fishing and cookouts and bowling. He even had a cookout over here at the house and invited all these people over. And uh, I snatched me a couple of them burgers. They were good. And Christians can cook. And they like bacon. <laughs> and I wonder if that weren't enough. Last week, Danny accepted a, a, a job offer. And I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. I was hoping he was gonna be working with me, but his new boss offered to pay him in money, <laughs> not chickens and pies and hugs. <laughs> you can't put a price on a good hug. Sure you can. But my point here is God rocks if you let him. We got to let the love rock.
Great Depression. We even made it through Jimmy Carter. We will make it through the Obama years. tastes better than that frog leg university cup. <laughs> well, she may be a schizophrenic, but she'll always have each other. You know, I'd give my right arm to be ambidextrous. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. We have too much fun here. I love doing this. I swear I do. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. And thank you for supporting the show. We have, now we have several donating options. We have, we have instant online donations to personal checks and cash. We, we like cash. Uh, you can also buy some of these extra handsome Frogland University t-shirts and stuff. Yeah, good old FU. Check out the whole product line. Uh, you'll look better than you have in years. We got, we got cups and caps and t-shirts. And unlike that Hillary Clinton wear, People won't make fun of you. <laughs> and we're still looking for sponsors and advertisers, and we're not just going to deal with anybody. Okay, sure we will. <laughs> Visit the website for details. Now, please stop by the website, subscribe to the show alerts, because I'm telling you, subscribing at YouTube and Vimeo is not subscribing to the show alerts. You can only subscribe to the official show alerts at intellectualfroglegs.com. And I don't spam you, I promise. Anyway, please share the show with everybody you can. Sharing is crucial. And I hope to see you on the next Intellectual Frog Legs. God bless. Yeah.